So today I'm hoping to go over at least six or seven of these uh, um, tests that we're doing. And, and even by their name, um, we can see kind of, I guess, two sample independent t-tests that's telling us that um, there will be two tests or two samples we're going to be comparing each other, such as something like, did men score higher on this test than women? That would be a two sample independent t-test. The word independent is important because it means that someone cannot be in group one and in group two. So in that case, that would be impossible. But if I divided the group by saying um, basketball and volleyball players, it could be that somebody played both. And any one of those participants would not be allowed in our study. So two sample, it's telling us that there have to be two groups in this one. And the t-test only allows two, that we cannot have three, four or five groups, just two. And the t-test is used uh, when we don't know the population um, standard deviation. And we rarely know that because if we knew all of that to begin with, we probably wouldn't be doing the research. In the second one, the dependent or paired t-test, the word dependent means that we will only have one group. So for instance, um, maybe 35 of us go to the gym and we're going to do Zumba three mornings a week. So we weigh in at the beginning of January, we attend the Zumba classes, and at the end of March, we weigh in again. So we're the exact same group. We're dependent on the, on the, the weigh in at the beginning is dependent on the weigh in at the end. So our hypotheses would be something like, um, the null hypothesis is D, the difference in our weight equals zero. That would be assuming uh, that our three days of zooming a week did nothing. And the null would be that either D did not equal zero or that D was greater than zero or D was less than zero according to what we were trying to do. So it could be something like trying to lower cholesterol by um, eating oatmeal. Uh, any one of those uh, experiments where we're at the beginning and we're at the end, where the, the same um, people use a lot in education, um, where we would have people, the students write a test and then some intervention, and then write at the end to see if whatever we were teaching, they had improved. Um, so that, that is different from the first one now because we will have only one group. And the one sample t-test, uh, think of quality control. So uh, maybe um, on our Pepsi can, it says there will be uh, eight fluid ounces in the, in the uh, can. So we are saying or proclaiming, the null hypothesis is proclaiming, that mu will equal eight fluid ounces. And the alternative, we as the um, alternative or, or research or quality controller are either going to say that mu does not equal eight, which means that we don't know if it is less than or greater than, we just know that it's not eight, or we could be worried that the um, the machine is not filling correctly. And so we might want to say, we believe mu is less than eight. One sample, we are then going to collect random, of course, random 50 cans, open them and test them and see if the um, sample mean is statistically significantly less or greater than the proclaimed eight fluid ounces. So when, when anything is status quo, then we, we're just gathering one sample to show that we think that that's not, if that's not so. Um, 
maybe somebody is saying, oh, I think the stats mark from uh, this educational uh, SATs from this educational um, district is equal to 1,230. And someone says, I don't think so. And so they randomly would choose um, a sample and test one sample. So I think that that's very, those three t-tests are very different and your research question will be worded in such a way as you would already say, um, for instance, that you don't think eating Kellogg's K twice a day for six months is going to have you lose 10 pounds. So in that case, you would know that that was a dependent uh, set because uh, what you weigh to begin with and what you weigh at the end is got to be the 10 pounds. So the ANCOVA or ANOVA is if we're comparing more than two groups. So we can, maybe we want to compare, um, we think that, uh, uh, that income depends on race. And so we want to compare black, white, Hispanic, and Asian. So the t-test will not work. Uh, if we try to pair those up and do the t-test with each of the pairs, um, be because we're doing it so many times, we're basically, we sh in probability, we should be changing that p-value each time by multiplying it. So to begin with, it's 0 0.05. The next time, it should be 0 0.0025, and so on. So the multiple t-test will not be the answer, so the answer is ANOVA. And uh, when we use that, we're comparing, uh, again, comparing uh, the means of uh, two or more groups. And in that one, we also can have a two-way ANOVA, which we cannot do in a t-test. So in this case, uh, maybe I wanted to compare different routes to um, getting to the airport. So I have four different routes taking, taking me from uh, my villa to the, to the airport. And I keep track of that because, of course, I will have to do it at different times as well. And I have different drivers. So I would have four, four groups, but within each group, I may have five drivers. So that's a two-way ANOVA. So not only am I comparing how the routes are among the, the, the four different paths to get to the airport, I'm also going to look at is there any difference among the drivers in each group. So uh, pretty powerful stuff, uh, ANOVA, and quite happy to take as much probably abuse as you can give it. So um, its drawback, however, is that it only will say, so our null hypotheses here would be that um, there is no difference in the income based on race. And the alternative is that at least one of them is different. And ANOVA will show a statistically significant value less than the gold standard of 0 0.05 if only one of them turns out to be significant. And then we do a post hoc test, post hoc meaning after the fact, um, because now we know that at least one of them is different and one of the post hoc tests will then tell us which of those are different. And the ANCOVA also comparing means, but it, the C stands for um, covariate, meaning that, um, well, a good example would be that I have two groups and I want to um, compare what one group is the control group and the other group is the experimental group. In this experimental group, I'm offering statistics tutoring every lunch hour and the control group gets none of that. So what, what I want to know is, is there a difference? But one of the things that could be wrong with that is that my group to begin with were not equal. So it may be that the students that got the tutoring were also a higher grade point average, for instance. So I would have to be sure that I didn't have groups that were different in other ways, maybe by age, maybe by sickness or whatever. So ANCOVA allows 
you to put those covariates in and basically SPSS levels the playing field. So what, what it's saying is uh, this would be the mean if indeed everyone had the same pretest. So also another powerful test. But also, again, we're comparing mean. The other group are looking at relationships in multiple regression. You know, what are the predictors? So what is the predictor of your heating bill? Is it the temperature outside? Is it the thickness of your insulation? Is it the age of your um, furnace? So those would, would all be um, independent variables that we're looking at whether they will predict the temperature. Um, like, it's considered to be the workhorse because it's used so often in dissertations. It has uh, many assumptions, but, the, but only one that it really worries about, about collinearity. But in this case, we're just looking to see if you can match your research question uh, with the analysis. And the logistic multiple regression uh, is almost the same as multiple regression, but the dependent variable is a yes or no. And our values, instead of being just predictors, they give us an odds ratio. So it might read something like, if you're a smoker, you're 10 times more likely to end up in the sick pile because logistic means two, right? And dichotomous. So it means that uh, you, you're you dividing the people of um, what's the odds ratio of being sick. And one of the predictors could, could be smoking. And so if uh, uh, you are smoking, so the odds ratio reads five times more likely or less likely to end up wherever. And chi-squared is basically the one that we need if we're working in categorical data. Is there any relationship uh, between gender and owning a gun, for instance, where the answers to both those questions, gender is a word and whether you own a gun is a word also. So um, anyway, I hope that's enough of a background to, to get you started. And I thought that we would just um, uh, try putting some um, research questions out and seeing if you can... Uh